Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we will be installing nitrous on the LS swapped Cressida. I hope you like this one. That's all we're doing this episode. Just put in nitrous on an 80s car that has an LS engine swapped into it. Stay tuned. Before we put the nitrous on the car, uh, I'd just like to show you some footage. We actually drove the car around the block. <laughs> Not plenty of water. Okay. Hot then. That's good. It, uh, it drives good, it shifts through every single gear, which I was actually, I wasn't surprised, but I've never built an auto before, so it's good to see that it shifts through gears. It uh, needs a tune up because we've obviously had the airflow meter removed and a few other things tweaked with the ECU itself. Uh, in doing that, it won't idle very good, so you gotta kinda just give it a little bit of a rev, and then it will idle, uh, and it doesn't really wanna rev too hard, it's sort of, a bit jerky in the higher RPMs, which is fine. Don't want to give it a hard time without giving it a tune-up. So it runs probably about as good as a C200 with an AMG badge, which seems to be all the rage nowadays. I see them every day. And I'll fire up the nitrous air episode now. So we drove it, as you could see, and it was fun. We drove it with the exhaust closed, unfortunately, so you don't get to hear its full noise. But down the track, you'll hear it, and when we thrash it, maybe do a skid or something. But that's illegal, so don't do that. Anyway, let's roll the nitrous. So these are the parts you will need for your nitrous setup. These should be included in your kit. A fuel solenoid, a nitrous solenoid, various brackets to hold those solenoids. You will need relays, various wiring parts, which are all included in the kit. A way of getting the nitrous from solenoids to the fogger. Depending what car you have, this is to get your fuel supply to your thingamabob, your squirty petrol line. You will also need a way of getting the gas to your nitrous. So you give you that. You will need some jets which are to change how much fuel and nitrous enter the engine. Bunch of like little nuts and bolts and stuff. I've been using my own ones because I like the cap head style screw. A watt or a micro switch or something so you can tell when the engine is full throttle. Uh, you need some ways of connecting those lines up which happens to be dash fittings, they're all dash 4 except dash 6 for the that bad boy and this is recommended but not essential a blanket to heat up your bottle which is actually sort of if you don't have this you don't run the correct pressures a lot of the time you also probably need a gauge this is a nitrous express gauge uh, it's kind of important to have they're pretty cheap Definitely get one. With your blanket, you'll get a Hobbs switch or a pressure switch. So it'll tell the blanket when to turn on and off. That comes with the blanket kit. You will need your nitrous bottle, of course. They also give you this adapter to fit your switch in your nitrous line. Although this size is different from that, dash six. This is dash four, whatever. So on the side of the bottle where the gauge port is, it has a 1.8 NP teeth fitting. Oh, geez. So what I've done is just machined up 
This little um, adapter on the lathe. Screws on there, seals with the anoring. This is the thing. So then that way, once that will have the, sw the switch, once that will have the gauge. And uh, that's about all you need. You also need a switch inside the car to activate and a switch to turn on and off the heater. So that's what you get. Also, they give you this little, it looks like Loctite, just to seal up your threads. I don't know if it's just blue Loctite actually. I don't think it is. It says, I think it says in the instructions, don't use Loctite. Anyway, that's that. And uh, this should be all you need to install your nitrous kit. If you're not familiar with the LS, you have to get fuel into this nitrous solenoid. What they supply in the kit is this dash four line, this one, which actually screws onto here, which is where you can put a fuel gauge or, you know, a test something or other like this. So that screws onto there. If I can actually get it on like that. And all you have to do is if you're familiar, familiar with the Schrader valve, you can take the center of the valve out, then put that bad boy onto your, your thing and then run your other line to the inlet. Problem with this is it's at the front here and putting the, the valve somewhere inconspicuous is sort of difficult. So I'm probably gonna do away with using this component on the kit. And what I will be doing is I'll cut the fuel line here, put a T piece in and tee up the solenoid down the back here somewhere. So this will sit back here, probably on this side. It'll actually go on this side, I'm sorry, because here is the fuel side of the inlet. And then what you do is you get these things and they just screw on here with, you put your little brass fitting inside there, the, the jet. And then I can run these down the back like this to the valves. That way, once it has the engine cover, you won't even be able to really tell it has nitrous. And I think the symmetry of this, like this, will also look pretty damn cute. So it will be like that. Then we'll go down to each, each valve. And in doing so, I will do away with using this part. So it's not a big deal. It's just, I think it'll look cleaner like that. So there's one solenoid, fits in there. It doesn't rub on the, on the plug or anything. It's a, it's a bit tight, but that'll do it. I'm putting these plugs on the solenoids so I can take them off and on if I ever have to. Makes it a lot easier. And same as putting them on because these are kind of hard to get to. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is how I'm going to attach my switch, my micro switch for the wide open throttle. I've just cut out a piece of steel, which I will weld onto the pedal like so. That has a threaded five mil bolt hole. So I can, I have no bolt here, so I'm over there, put it in here. And then I can adjust the length of that using a lock nut to stop it. And then it'll hit against that. So it will be adjustable. And then off of this part here, where it mounts the two bolts, I'll build like a little thing that'll hold this like that. So when you accelerate, it'll tap it, can adjust it. I think that's the best way to do it. All right, so with the wiring of the solenoids completed, uh, we can address mounting the bottle. They do give you these mounts with the kit, which I'm going to use. I'm just going to make up um, like a little frame that will sit in the boot so this can sit a little bit up above the carpet just so I can take it in and out easily. But So we'll head down to the boot and I'll show you what's going on with mounting the bottle. 
All right, so we're in the boot. We're in the dark depths. It's night time here and all my lights are currently down the front of the garage. I haven't got any at the back. I'm so sorry. So if we lift the carpet, as you know, in a previous episode, we made up this little plate to cover where the fuel pump is. My goal is to make a little frame that goes across here, comes down here to about here, and the bottle will sort of sit almost straight, just on this bit of an angle, just so it can take up sort of here and go here. Uh, in the instructions, it says mount the bottle like straightwards or standing up and down, depending on where you can. But we'll, I'll make a frame up, It'll sit on the frame, I'll just draw some little holes through the carpet and I'm going to put it on some studs so then there's no bolts going through the carpet struggling to find the bolt holes. Um, that's what we'll do right now. I'll uh, just get some metal in here and mock it all up. The bottle's going to sort of sit like this in the car. According to the instructions, it says put the second bracket seven inches above this, this bracket, which would be like here, which I think is a printing error for this bottle size. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to pop it like this. So I'm going to make the frame that goes from here to here, come down one side will be this side. I also have to kick it on a smidge of an angle to make sure this, well, this pressure gauge thing that I've made clears where it has to go, and this side has a gauge. So it's the sensor for the blanket, that's the gauge side. So we'll make a little frame that'll bolt to the car, has some studs sticking through, and I'm sure we'll figure it out. So I started making the frame for the nitrous bottle out of steel, I had some studs, I thought it'd be a good idea to sort of look like this shape where it would bolt into the boot as you will see in this quick little montage. But I've decided I'm going to do away this stud idea because I'm going to make this out of aluminium even though this probably weighs about I don't know, nothing. I'm going to make it out of aluminium because if you want to go fast, you've got to be light. Every kilo counts. So use a toilet before you go racing. That'll even help. Just joking. But I'm going to make this out of aluminium now. So we'll get a sweet fabrication footage on a tripod. So to the untrained eye, it might have looked like I welded these things all crooked. But that's because these NOS bottle tabs aren't actually straight. So they're on the, a bit of an angle, that one, that one. That's because that's how the nitro sits on the bottle. The brackets that bolt into the car will be flat with the car. So the frame is going to sort of sit about here, maybe up here or something like this. Um, I'm just going to weld on these little feet, which will give it a way to bolt flat into the boot. Go in here. Obviously it's subjected to moving around. <clears throat> it's also going to be up the top of these bits of angle, so it'll be bit taller. That's just so when the carpet is laid down, <clears throat> I'll cut some little like slots and it should look kind of flush with the carpet, I'm hoping. Anyway, we'll weld these feet on and see where we can and cannot fit it. Bottles in. Here's the brackets. Now, 
uh, wire up the blanket and run main gas line. So I've installed a nice, nice blanket. It has a plug here that I've put on for the blanket itself. Uh, then it comes up pressure switch. One of these is earth, one of them is a trigger from the relay, which is just up here. Um, I'm going to mount it up there somewhere, probably there. And then these will tuck behind this, so you won't see them, they just run along here. Uh, and then this, I'll put a little bit of conduit on there, and that should be all done. So that's done, now we have to run the nitrous pipe, the main gas line. So we've got to run the nitrous line from the back. I've decided it's going under the car. I'm going to use some P-clips to mount it up. I went down to the local shop that sells that sort of stuff and they wanted like seven bucks for two P-clips, which I thought was kind of steep. So went inside, 3D printed some. This is my first one, the prototype. It was a bit loose, not that good. Second one, Mark II, works very well. It's quite thick. And then, after they fit, and you know they fit, just go to town. So we printed out all these bad boys. Uh, and they just clip on. I chose green because I ran out of white and why not? A little bit of green thing under the car. If one does get damaged, um, I can always just put another one. So don't freak out that there's some 3D printed stuff underneath the car. There's bloody car companies 3D printing brake calipers and stuff nowadays. So. Here's a line, comes down from the depth up here along the back. There's actually a, like a clip for it here already on the firewall, which is to hold the cable for the uh, speedo. Comes down up here into the solenoid. I've just got it loosely fitted. Uh, there's something was mounted here. It's got like some screw hole so I'm just going to use that as one of the holes that will house one of the p-clips I'm going to use a white p-clip in the engine bay and then the green ones underneath so here's the lines underneath the car We've got the little p-clips the one scoot around comes there Getting the torch sorry it's dark on the ground then it comes down down there, then it swoops up into the engine bay. Then back, then it comes across the back here. Then up through a grommet in the floor. Where it then comes up through the grommet. Let's get out of the, out of the light. Up the back. So it does go in the car just a smidge through the comes up through the carpet to the bottle where we have the heater wired in and there are the two little switch sensors I just screw on there so there it is in the boot I think it looks pretty cool the car's still jacked up but there it is all cleaned out I've taken everything out except for the oil filter which we will be putting on when it's ready to roll there's the wire in here Got the sensor and the plug for the blanket, easy to remove for when 
got to fill it up. So now we just have to get the bottle filled up. We can put it in and then take it down for a tune. Oh, thanks for watching this episode. Didn't see you there. Um, I hope you like this one. It's kind of cool putting nitrous on a car. It's not that hard to do actually. So if you're thinking about doing it, I highly suggest it. On the next episode, we're going to get this thing on the dyno, probably take it down the track. And then we'll start another project, which I have outside here, ready to go. But thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you on the next one.